Welcome back to the Tech Table. Today we're going to talk about one of the great new features in the new 4.2 update for Premiere Pro, and that's support for Panasonic's AVC Entra line of cameras. Today I happen to have an HPX 300 AVC Entra camera that features a full 10-bit and 422 color space. It even has a 2.2 megapixel 3MOS imager and a 17x interchangeable lens system. And the best part for me, again, I've been shooting with this thing all day and been really impressed with the camera. It's full 1920, 1080, again at 422 color space. And all of this records on Panasonic's industry standard simple to use P2 cards. And as always with Premiere Pro, you can edit directly off the card or move the files over to your computer. Also, as you would expect from Panasonic, they have full support for their DVC Pro file-based workflows, so it's a really flexible camera in lots of different environments. And of course, it's all supported in Premiere Pro 4.2. Let's go check it out. Before you start working with AVC Entra, don't forget you have to first apply the 4.2 update. So to do that, it's easiest just to do that by launching any CS4 application. In this case, I'll go ahead and launch Photoshop. Just go to Help, Updates, and it'll start to perform an update using the Adobe Updater. At that point, just go ahead and download and install updates. Once that's completed, you're ready to start editing. If you'd rather go ahead and download your updates manually, you can do that as well just by going to adobe.com. And just go to Downloads, Updates, and go ahead and find Adobe Premiere and Adobe Media Encoder for your particular platform. And you'll notice there's a 4.2 update for Adobe Media Encoder and a 4.2 update for Adobe Premiere Pro. Let's go ahead and launch Adobe Premiere Pro 4.2. We'll start with adding a new project. And I'm just going to call it ABC Intra Intro. And the first thing you'll notice is we now have a setting for AVC Intro right up at the top. You'll go ahead and open that folder. And within that folder, you'll see all the various settings for Panasonic AVC Intra. You can just double check some of the frame rates there. You'll notice we have both 100 and 50 and all the various formats. And I'm going to go ahead and just do an AVC Intra 100 at 60. And I'm going to go ahead and label this sequence AVC 160. As with all tapeless formats in Premiere Pro, it's, it's critical that you start in the media browser. The media browser helps Premiere Pro identify what type of tapeless format it's dealing with. So I'm going to go ahead and just go to my home directory, uh, double click on tapeless formats, and you'll see all my various formats in here. And I'm going to go ahead and go down to uh, AVC Intra Annapolis. And all I have to do is double click on it, and it will automatically show me the thumbnails. Uh, and all the information. And I can sort of look at all the information that's here, frame rates, as you see, I've got it, uh, frame rate showing at 60, and duration and so forth. If you want to be able to see this window uh, a bit larger, you can just hit the tilde key on the keyboard, and that'll take this up full screen and allow me to take a closer look at the uh, creation dates and duration. Uh, I myself like to take duration and move it over here next to the name uh, because the duration is a, a little bit more important to me, uh, so I know how long it is. And again, all you have to do is hit the tilde key again, and I can take a look at, uh, at those clips. Now, just to start out, all I have to do is just double click on any of these clips to load it into the source panel. And from here, I can just go ahead and hit play and take a look at my clip. And again, this is playing natively uh, directly off the P2 media. <laughs> Story. And you'll notice it plays, it plays great. So I can go ahead and scrub through that, set an endpoint, and set an out point, and then drag it directly down to my timeline. Another great feature of Premiere Pro is being able to take a closer look at the properties of the clip. To do this, you can either right mouse click on the clip in the timeline or right mouse click on the clip in the source window. And I'm going to go ahead and just right mouse click in the source window, go to properties, and again, as always, uh, you can take a look at the image size. So I'm shooting at 1920, 1080. 
and uh, I can take a look at the data rates and all of the MXF data. So we are taking a closer look at the metadata. You, you can also bring up the metadata panel to take a closer look. Now, one of the things you might notice is it's using uh, part of the clip name here in the project panel. You can go ahead and assign it a project name without changing the actual clip name. So this is just a name for this particular project. I can call it close up of boat and that's now the name of that clip for this particular project so premiere pro is replacing that close up of boat name with the 0055 jx name it had before so again it really helps to keep uh, the clips organized without changing it on the original file so you can do that really with any format but it's just something i like to point out one of the questions i get quite often is how do i modify my audio on the timeline say uh, to stereo this particular p2 clip is recording this as four separate channels of audio, all of which are mono, how can I bring those down to one stereo pair? Start by just deleting this off of the timeline, clicking on the clip, and then going to Clip Audio Options, Source Channel Mapping, and telling Premiere Pro that I want stereo on one channel. Clicking OK. Now you'll notice when I drag the clip down to the timeline, it went ahead and created a stereo channel and for those of you that are new to Premiere you'll notice that right here I have uh, two speakers representing stereo versus audio track 4 only representing uh, mono so you can convert that to stereo fairly quickly okay so I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that clip that was just something I wanted to uh, to share with you guys now you can go ahead and just peruse any clip that you you'd like to take a closer look at so I'll go ahead and just grab some uh, some footage here and drag and drop several clips directly to the timeline. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit the zoom to sequence button. That's just above the enter key. And you'll notice that I get all of my clips uh, nicely positioned on the timeline and of course at this point you can just go ahead and start to do your edit you can you know go ahead and right mouse click and ripple delete or hold down various modifier keys and allow you to ripple delete on the fly or do L cuts and uh, and J cuts like so forth and be able just to fit those directly in there so there's all sorts of ways to do different editing on Premiere Pro and you can catch some of those episodes on Adobe TV to learn editing techniques but you can start to work with this media in any number of different ways at this point I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk about mixing formats which is a one of the great things that Premiere Pro and its tapeless formats are known for again natively I'm going to go down and pick another format let's just go ahead for this example and pick a DVC Pro green screen and this is uh, one that I use routinely I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop this this clip of myself right mouse click on it so I'm gonna do what's called a replace with After Effects composition you have a DVC Pro clip here which will be on top of an AVC intra clip so at this point I'm gonna go ahead and just use our key light which is our standard keying program that comes with Adobe After Effects and I'm gonna go ahead and just click on my screen color color picker and very quickly go to my screen matte and adjust my matte uh, clip black levels and white levels to get those and maybe shrink down that uh, just a touch there and go ahead and look back at my uh, at my matte uh, for a quick key that looks pretty good and without having to save, uh, I can go directly right back to Premiere Pro. And you'll notice Premiere Pro instantly uh, updates itself and is now working with After Effects. So the point of showing you this, and we do show this a lot in some of our other videos, and more specifically on keying, is that you can in fact mix and match uh, various formats. So in these particular cases, I've got a, uh, a P2 